The 1960s were a time of intense fire activity in Chicago. Like most of the older cities in the United States, Chicago was changing. Each year, hundreds of businesses and thousands of Chicagoans moved from the city to the suburbs and left the buildings they had occupied since the turn of the century abandoned. Vagrants, vandals, and arsonists became the new tenants in the abandoned buildings and started fires that severely challenged the Chicago Fire Department and its chief, Commissioner Robert Quinn. Wearing his battered white helmet, Commissioner Robert Quinn, as always, is on the scene. When Quinn joined the fire department in 1927, his mother gave him a leather helmet Repainted many times as he rose through the ranks, the battered old High Eagle was the only helmet Quinn ever wore. A lifelong bachelor, Quinn was frequently seen in the company of attractive women, but his true love was the Chicago Fire Department. Under his guidance, the CFD met the challenge of the 60s and became one of the finest fire departments in the world. Bob Quinn was not only a leader, but an inventor as well, and he is remembered by the fire service as the father of the snorkel. Quinn wrote the book on the use of the snorkel, and the CFD used them effectively at virtually every fire. For several years, Quinn had looked for a better way to put water on big fires. Neither ladder pipes or apparatus-mounted turrets provided a master stream that could be maneuvered with the speed and precision that he desired. After watching men trim trees and service signs from an elevating platform, Commissioner Quinn borrowed a 50-foot Pittman giraffe and had a monitor wired to the basket with a 3-inch supply hose hung from the boom. After rigorous load and stability testing, the fire department acquired the apparatus, painted it red, and put the world's first snorkel in service. The first response of a snorkel was on October 14, 1958, to a fire at the Harvey Lumber Company on Blue Island Avenue at Paulina, and Commissioner Quinn liked what he saw. Snorkel 1 was soon joined by more snorkels, each bigger and better than the one before. Operating a monitor in the basket of a giraffe was a wet job, and the crew called their rig the snorkel. They swore it was just like being underwater. Although wet, the elevating platform added a new dimension to firefighting, and the era of the snorkel had begun. Within a few years, the elite seven-man snorkel squads were responding to every serious fire in the city to provide not only master streams, but also a whole new approach to high-angle rescue. Trapped citizens found it easier to step into a basket than to climb down a tall ladder.
Commissioner Quinn did not hesitate to praise the value of his invention and proudly proclaimed, Right from the first call it responded to, October the 18th, 1958, the snorkel proved its worth. Now, for the first time, my men can quickly, easily maneuver themselves into position to place water with rifle shot accuracy wherever it is needed. The snorkel speed and mobility have materially helped our department increase its effectiveness and enable us to save countless lives and valuable industrial, residential, and commercial property that might otherwise have been lost. Equally important to any commissioner or chief, the snorkel has boosted the morale of my men by making their work a little easier and taking some of the hazards out of firefighting. I know there have been many times when I, my men, and citizens of Chicago have said, God bless those wonderful things, the snorkel. Dubbed Snorkel Bob by the press, the commissioner was undoubtedly pleased as his magnificent machine stood shoulder to shoulder as they battled the two million square foot blaze at the Ford City Warehouse Complex.